everyone. So today we are doing an updated pottery barn, a faux pottery barn look. And so I'm going to show you step by step what we do. It's been a while since I've done this. So we thought we would do it again and I've changed the way I do it up a little bit. So I'm going to show you the changes that I've made, but we're going to start with the nightstands. We also have a bed that we'll be doing and a dresser that we're going to do as well as this. But what we have done so far is we have painted this in the color Perfect Khaki and that's going to be our base color that we see underneath the glaze that we're going to be doing. And let me show you the products that we are going to use. So here's a look at the products we are using. We have General Finishes Van Dyke Brown and we have different size foam brushes that we are going to use to put it on. The piece and after we put it on then we will go with this deck stain brush to smooth it out then we'll go with this rubber dog brush to create the wood grain look and finally we'll soften that up and create even more texture with a chip brush and for the smaller areas pretty much the same thing minus the dog brush and we have a wipe rag because we'll be using that to get all the product off of the brushes before we start applying our glaze, we are going to be doing a light scuff sand. This is a rad pad by Surf Prep and this is in the fine grit. And what we are doing is we're just going over the entire piece so that if there is any dust collected or anything like paint bubbles that are on it, this is going to get it out so it is nice and smooth so that when we go in with the glaze, we don't have a rough surface that's gonna get caught on all the bumps. It's going to give a much smoother finish. What we're going to start with is we're going to do apply the glaze with a foam brush and then we go in with our deck stain brush and we do this kind of crisscross feature just to make sure that we have the glaze evenly distributed and then we're going to wipe it back this just creates a nice smooth look and has a nice even finish so that when we go in with our next brush it has a more even consistent appearance to it and what we're using this for is a rubber dog brush you heard that right it is a rubber dog brush and we're going to lightly turn it to the side and just go back and forth you may have to go over this a couple times to get a consistent look to it but that's going to get a lot of that product off to create a lighter finish for this look and it also gives it a more rustic appearance but then you're going to go in with a chip brush and you're going to smooth it out just a little bit and it kind of reapplies some of that product and gets it moved around a little bit to create a very consistent clean wood grain look and after that we're going to start on the next section i'm working in very small sections because this glaze dries fairly quickly so you have to work quick especially with you moving around and removing all of this product it dries it out faster so i'm working in small sections and when we use the dog brush that's going to blend the first section that we did with the second section that we did so it has a very consistent look and you don't have to worry about creating a wet line or having lines that are in your finish because you're blending it all out with all the different brushes. But the rubber dog brush is going to be the main one that's going to help blend your two areas together. One important thing to notice with the chip brush is that I'm starting with the edges first to blend those areas out and I'm going in small sections blending it together but my final pass is going to be long smooth passes across the entire thing to create a clean, and straight look because if I just left it without doing the passes all the way across I would have kind of patches and it wouldn't really it was not really the look that we're going for and also the more you brush the softer the look so the less you brush the more rustic it's going to be now that we're moving on to the side we have smaller trim pieces so i'm going with a one inch foam brush to apply the glaze and then i'm going in with a small chip brush i'm skipping the dog brush part because these areas are too small to get the dog brush in and my chip brush really helps to create that look anyway i don't need any more help like i do on those larger areas so what I'm doing is I'm applying the glaze to the middle of the section first, and then once I have most of the product off my brush, I then go up to the top so I don't have a lot of glaze that collects in the edges. 
And then I go in with the chip brush and the first thing that I do is I kind of flick out the glaze that has collected in the edges and then I smooth it out in the middle and then of course we're going to finish with creating the light the nice long brush strokes one thing that is a pet peeve of mine is that I always want to go with the grain and it just like kills me when I see people that don't go with where the grain should be. So the way you kind of think about it is that if you are putting this together like a puzzle, if the piece is going up and down how you would glue it together, then you're going to go up and down with your product. And if it is something, a puzzle piece that you would put in sideways, then you would go left to right with that. That's kind of the way that I typically go with it and if you know where the natural grain is then that helps you out too but since this piece is already painted we don't have that luxury so we're going to go in with our puzzle piece technique that I guess maybe I should just trademark that little tidbit but so again we're going in with the glaze mainly in the middle we pushed it out to the side we made sure that we got the edges we're using the chip brush to flick it out and another thing I like to do is I like to go um, from the top and flick it out then to the bottom and flick it out that way it's not all going down one way or up another way it's going up and down and I feel like it gives it a cleaner look of course that trim piece that you see that's separating the top from the bottom is going to go left to right because if you're doing a puzzle piece that's how it would go on and this larger area this is the area you have to work really quick on because it's a larger area and i probably should have switched to my four inch foam brush that i used on the top but alas i didn't so i'm just gonna have to work really fast and then i went in with the chip brush and went that way I will enter in a product here called Extender. It's a product by General Finishes and it is your magic trick in case you mess anything up. You just pour some extender onto a rag and you can literally wipe all of this off like nothing ever happened and it's a nice clean slate. Did I maybe have to do this a time or two? Maybe, possibly. Yes, I did. I did have to go in and use the extender to completely wipe it off and start over on the other top of the other nightstand. I didn't like how it was turning out. It turned out that I had my wipe rag had lint all over it and I was getting lint into my finish and I didn't figure out that that was the cause of it. I thought that something was in my brushes, but it wasn't. It was my rag that I was using. So maybe that's another tip for you is to make sure that the rag that you're using is lint free so that when you're wiping the product off your brush onto the rag so that you have a clean brush to move the product around that you're not getting lint balls in your finish how I did. But that's the look at the top and this is the look at the bottom and I wanted to show you that before we go into the next part. As I, you can see this is where I had messed up. When I was doing the top, I got a little bit on the edge. And since this is such a light look, those brush marks were going to show. So I put some extender on my rag and I cleaned off the area that had some over paint from when I did the top and I wiped it off and put it all back on. Now we're going to the drawers. So I go in with a four inch foam brush and I'm getting into the corners. I need to make sure that I get the sides and this is a better angle of seeing how the dog brush goes on and you can see so much of that product is coming off and now you can see with the chip brush I'm kind of reapplying that glaze back in and creating a softer look I'm starting in the corners and getting all of it out of the edges and I'm working it into the rest of the drawer and then working through the middle of the product and then I will go in with my long brush strokes going all the way across at the very end. Like so. You want to make sure that you go over the little detail edges. The, those are very hard because I feel like they just get a lot of the extra collection. So you want to make sure that you can kind of feather those out so that it's not looking so much darker than the front side of the drawer. Also make sure that you don't forget to get the top and the sides of the drawers. This is a forgotten area, but it shows up a lot when you close the drawer. And also when you're using the chip brush on this part, make sure that you 
kind of put most of the brush into the drawer so that you're only getting the very edge of the brush onto the top and the sides that way you don't get onto the area that you've already put the glaze on and mess up all your work that you did and no one wants to be crying while we do all this another rule of thumb that we like to do is if the factory finish decided that it needed to be finished then we will refinish that as well if it's the back of the dresser that the manufacturer did not finish we typically leave that alone and we're not being very precise with the hardware holes, but we are going to put some product in there just in case you see it from around the hardware that is going to be put back on. Now we're going to the next drawer in a different angle so that you can see a little bit better. But this is another reason that I like to keep the drawers in while I work because I have noticed that as I move on with a project, more and more product gets built up into my foam brush. And as a consequence of that, I've noticed that some of my pieces and drawers and things like that gets darker as the project goes on. And that is because I am just applying more product. And with the drawers in, I can see if I'm getting darker and I can kind of pull back a little bit and wipe off more of that product and make sure that I'm getting a consistent look with my color. I also decided to go in and fill the hardware hole early on now just in case I didn't want to mess up as I'm trying to fill in the hardware hole later and then mess up the area that I had already did my glaze and my brushing to. I'm also getting the bottom trim because I had gotten a little bit over on there and I don't want it to dry before I have time to get to it at the end. So I went ahead and did it now so that I could get it while it was still wet and I could still move the product around. But since I don't have enough area for the deck stain brush, I'm using the foam brush to make my smooth, consistent lines over here before I go in with the dog brush. Again, I got a little bit on the top, so I decided to go ahead and smooth it out now instead of letting it dry and then have to tackle it later. Now for the, draw, for the dog brush, I do think that you have to play around a little bit with this and find your best consistency the way that you like to do the brushing. Um, because I definitely do feel like that there was a little bit of a learning curve with this, especially on areas that have a detail like the box cut out on these drawers. Um, I did have to kind of go over it a couple times to get a consistent look. And of course, now you're seeing the chip brush, getting the corners out, going just lightly over the entire thing, moving the product back around. And remember, the more you brush, the less rustic it's going to look. So if you want a truly, truly rustic look, maybe just get the edges out a little bit from the corners and maybe do one or two passes. But I do like to, I feel like the Pottery Barn look that we are going for is a little bit softer. So I'm doing a little bit more brushing. And remember, if you're going less or if you're going more, make sure that you do your final pass as a long one from left to right and that way you don't have patches that are showing up but your final pass always needs to be all the way across very straight so that you don't get those groups of patches and then it doesn't look consistent which is not the pottery barn look here is an example of the extender I had a little piece of something that had gotten caught into the drawer and the more I tried to get it out, the more it was messing it up. And I'm a perfectionist, so I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to redo this entire thing. So I poured extender on my rag and I just literally was able to wipe all of this off. And let me tell you, it gets dry and sticky and water alone would not be working on this, but the extender will get the job done. I would really recommend getting a bottle of extender before starting a project like this. So since this is the second time doing this, let's just speed it up and do it faster because you've already seen it done once. So here it is going on with the foam brush. And as you can see, as I was telling you, it gets darker the more we do this. So I am definitely going to have to spend a little bit more time brushing it all off. I am getting the product off this with, with a one inch brush just to kind of switch my brushes out and be able to get more of the product out. I'm spending a little bit more time in the corners because there's more product buildup. And then I'm gonna spend a little bit more time with the dog brush and the chip brush just to get it all in. And I'm gonna be looking at my top drawer just to make sure that I am staying consistent with the color. 
Sometimes you can see at the bottom of this drawer, the chip brush just gets a little crazy and decides to do a crazy line, but you can usually smooth it out pretty easily. The more you keep brushing, the smoother and softer your lines will be, and you can correct those areas that your chip brush just gets a little kooky crazy on. And now we're doing the top and we're doing the sides. Don't forget about those. And going in with the chip brush, remember you are going inside the drawer more so you have just the very edge that you are working with on the top of the drawer so you don't mess up the area that you already brushed and glazed on. Since you've already seen this technique done on the top and the sides and these first two drawers, I'm going to speed up the rest of this process, but I do think it's cool to see it on and see how you can get the color consistent. One thing I do want to make sure is that when I first started doing this technique, I got a little crazy with the flicking of the brush trying to get it all out and I noticed that some of it got in on my drawers, but I've learned to be a little bit more careful now. But if you're starting off, maybe take out the drawers before you do the other sides just so that you don't get those little dot marks from your products flying around everywhere. And then no matter what, you're going to want to remove the drawers when you start this part, which is going to be the base that you see. It's just not going to be easy to do this on the framework unless you take the drawers out but we're going to make sure that we're going left to right on areas that need to go left to right we're going up and down on areas that need to go up and down on i noticed that a lot of people do this technique with the sides going left to right and i i really that's just such a pet peeve of mine so i made sure that my columns went up and down on the sides of the drawers and here is the second nightstand. We're just going to make sure that we go really quick on this one and just kind of let you enjoy the time lapse of the process being done. Also, this is turned a little bit more to the light, so it appears lighter, but I promise the color is consistent between the two nightstands. And remember how I told you that some of that gets on the front of the dresser. I've learned now to make sure that whenever I do get some on the edges, I go ahead and wipe it off before I move on to the next area. But this actually is pretty good for a tutorial purpose of showing you another way. If you don't have the bottle of extender, you can again go in with that rad pad and you can just sand off that glaze and you can see it's working very well the i do like to use the extender better because i don't have to worry about accidentally getting my sandpaper on the area that i already did my brush on i just feel like i can work the extender a little bit more delicately than i can this rad pad I will link these rad pads in the comments below, but you can use our code MOSES10 for 10% off the Surf Prep website. We use their sanders for all of our products. We love our 3x4 electric ray, and we hook it up to their vacuum extraction system, and that keeps our shop nice and clean, and they just have an amazing product, and they have amazing customer service. We love them so much. And on to the drawers for the next nightstand. We're doing the same technique and just doing a time lapse so that you can see it all come together. Going into those hardware holes, making sure that we cover those so that you don't see it when we go into the, when we put the hardware back on. And make sure that you don't forget the tops and the sides. I do have to remind you, when you do take the drawers out, make sure you get the edge of the bottom and the sides because sometimes you will see those when you close the drawers. And that is actually the part that I'm doing right now. I basically go again to where the manufacturer finished and that's a good guideline as to where I need to get my product to. But in this case, I went to the edge of the drawer runner and that is where I went. And the bottoms and all the trim pieces are going left to right and the columns on the side are going vertically. Now it is time to put all of the drawers back in and this is when you get so excited and you see it all come together. I didn't picture this, maybe I'll put a little thing in the top here, but this is not the original feet that came with it. Our client didn't like the original feet that came with it, so she bought new ones, and we refinished them in the same style that we did the dresser, the two nightstands, and the bed that she had. But this is the same technique. Look at the difference. 
We love it so much and our client is so excited to get this back in her home. And this is a great Pottery Barn dupe style. I'll put a picture of what we are trying to achieve up here. And if you'll notice, Pottery Barn was charging $7.99 for one of those nightstands. And this is furniture that she already had and we were able to paint it and do this finish for a fraction of the cost. And before we close this out, we will take one last look at what the furniture looked like in the beginning so that you can see a side-by-side -side of the massive transformation that we did on this one. But if you like this video and you like this tutorial, make sure that you leave a comment in the comment section below and let us know what you want to see next. And make sure that you're following along for more flips and tricks.